Hello everyone, this is Tyler with Diesel Laptops. We are going to give you an overview of how to navigate through the Texas software, show you some of the features, and how to properly connect to a truck. Yes, there are a couple different ways you can do it, and some are better and some are worse than others depending on the situation. So first thing first, let's talk about this little black window down here. This is the news window. There's nothing too much important going on here. They will give you updates, shows they're going on, telling you about updates coming out, and so on and so on. I'm going to hit the little arrow here to minimize it. You can always bring it back anytime again by hitting that arrow down there as well. So before we just jump right into the truck module, let's go talk about some of these icons. The update check button will manually go check for updates. Uh, it's really not needed because every time you are on the internet and using your tool, you will find that the Texo is automatically checking for updates and a window will pop up telling you that there are updates available. The settings one, the only time you would ever really go into there is if you're putting another language pack on the truck. So yes, we can get you Spanish, Italian, German, French, Russian, whatever you want. Some are free, some there is a charge for, but they are available to put on the Texa. We just have to make sure you get authorized to do it, so it's something you do need to talk to us about. So I'm gonna scroll back up here, and we're only gonna talk about the truck module in this training session, as that is the most common one that we sell. So right off the bat, let's talk about some of these menu items up here. We have some forward and back arrows, we have our home button, and we have a little gear, which is a settings option. So you'll notice up here on beneath that, there is the menu, the diagnosis, and if I start clicking through things, you'll see it starts adding them up here. And all this allows us to do is click back to go back in the menu system a little more efficiently and easily than another possible way, which would be like using your back and forward arrows to do the same thing. Or the home button usually brings you all the way back to this menu. So let me click back on diagnosis so I can get you a little more familiar. So there we are back at our main menu, um, diagnosis menu I should say, which is the most common. But the main menu is actually right here. Uh, it'd be really rare for you to go in here to do anything. There's only a couple things. Diagnosis is where we just were. These other options that exist down here, the one you may see us doing something on a little bit wise is when we have to get in here and do some setting type stuff or configuration type stuff when we're having some problems. So if I scroll down here, you may see our tech support people clicking around in here and doing some of these things. And again, let's go back up to the top and let's go back to the diagnosis button. So as I click on diagnosis, you now will see over the left, we have a couple things. Uh, we'll come back to manual identification in a second. I support, this is our ticketing system with Texa. It'd be pretty rare, again, for you to be submitting case files direct with Texa. We want you calling us first when you have any kind of problems. I would say 95% of the issues we get people calling on, we're able to solve on the first call. And it'd be pretty rare that we'd have to actually get Texa involved to the level where we're doing a support ticket. So that's how we manage that. If I click on that, you'll see it just basically brings up a uh, an option here for us to kind of get in here for development requests or tech support. And this is where all your case files would be logged if you had any. Solve problems is a new feature Texa will be coming out with in the future. They're going to take a more hands-on approach to helping you with repair information, wiring schematics, uh, DTC information. You'll find that what we have on the Texa today and the other videos is great. There's tons of information in here. Plus we have our tech support tech support department as well that's more than adequate to help you with any of your needs. So now let's actually go try to connect to a truck. There's a couple ways to do it. The very first way is you can do manual identification. And if you want to go through here and click on VIN code search and type in your VIN number, it will decode that VIN and it will automatically bring you to the right spot to connect. So that's way number one. Option number two is if I do manual identification, you can also do it by engine code. So if you happen to know your engine code for your engine, you can type that in and it'll bring you to the right spot. The license plate number search, what that allows you to do is if you choose, you can start putting the license plate numbers in on vehicles as you go through the system. That way you can easily go back, pull up the exact vehicle you worked on, what you did to it, and it allows you to go to the exact area to connect. So most of these options you'll never use because there's much simpler ways to do it. And the first one is, let's do an example. So American Heavy Duty and Bus, you'll now see we get all kinds of options. Uh, some of the more common ones, Freightliner, International, Kenworth, they're obviously all listed in here. At this point, if you did not know what engine you had in your vehicle, but you knew it was a Freightliner, you would just simply hit the VIN Detect button. And what that will do is that will download your VIN number from the vehicle, and it will break it down and figure out exactly what year, make, and model you have, and bring you to the right area. If you do know what engine you have, you can skip that step as well and just simply click on Freightliner 
and then pick your engine. So for this example, we're going to say that we have a Cummins engine. So I click on Cummins, and as I go through here, we end up at the same place we would end up no matter what option we took, whether it was manual identification, VIN number search, plate tag search, whatever it was, we end up here. So at this point, you could do a couple things. If you want to scan your vehicle for the entire, uh, every computer on it, what's on the vehicle, what ECUs does it have, what versions of ECUs, and what codes are on there, we can do a, tr a truck global scan three is what it's called. We'll save that for another video at the end of this. You're more than welcome to watch it. Most people just go right to what they want to do. Most of the time, you end up spending your work on the engine. So they just go simply down to diesel injection system. And from there, we have some options. So for Cummins, it's broken down by emission levels. The most common one is the 2007 and newer emission level, which is this guy here. So this one would be used for anything 2007 emissions and newer. This one down here is really for the 98 and 04 emission levels that are using the J1939 plug, which is the 9-pin. And then there's one for the older ones, which are using the uh, 98 emission level J1708, which is the 6-pin plug. So that's usually the best way to go through to try to find what you're looking for and how to connect to it. And we'll actually go through some videos further that show you how to navigate once you're connected to the software. So the thing I want to show everyone though is what not to do, or at least wait until you're more experienced. So a lot of people will come in here and say, this is great. Oh, I'm right where I want to be. I'm going to go right to my activation tests and I'm going to work on the engine. And oh, I want to do a cylinder performance test on my engine. So they click cylinder performance and they hit the start button. And that, that's fine and dandy. But what they didn't realize is that the cylinder performance test is only for 2007 and newer Cummins engines. So if they're working on something older than that, they're just going to get some re-energized errors and not supported errors and probably freak out thinking their system's not working. And the reason's pretty simple. It's because in 2007, they called them cylinder performance tests. But prior to that, in the 2004 emission level and older, they called them cylinder balance performance tests. So they named them something different. They actually are different commands. They do things a little bit differently, and that's why there's two of them. So for the inexperienced technician, going into activation tests, uh, and let's go back here a second too. So going into activation tests or adjustments in coding and just clicking around and trying to go change things is probably a bad idea because they don't know what they want to be connected to or which one to pick. So we always tell people, just go through first, connect to your diesel engine injection, connect to the one that you know it is right. If it's the wrong one, it'll tell you. It'll give you a re-energize error, and you'll have some issues connecting if it's the wrong one. And again, if you're not sure, use that Truck Global Scan 3, or use the Vinutech feature to figure it out. If you're still lost, still having communication errors, that's when you call our tech support department. They're great. They will absolutely help you out, and they will tell, hopefully train you and show you what's going on as well. So some of the other things you can pull up from this menu without being connected to the vehicle are over here on the left. So I can pull up wiring diagrams, and you'll see there's a bunch of different wiring diagrams that are loaded for this vehicle. Some of our other videos will go over more of the wiring diagrams and technical schematics, but they are included in the system. Technical data sheets, this is where the, any kind of emission or any kind of repair information would be included. So right now it says there's these different categories have some technical data sheets, EPA 7 and 10. You'll find some other things in here, like here's one of the more common one, the VGT Cummins actuator. This one will show you how to properly install and calibrate the VGT actuator on a Cummins engine, which is quite a common occurrence uh, for the Cummins engines. So some good manual information in there. And again, further videos will do much better showing you more. Customer management, there's another whole training video we'll be releasing on that part of it. And we've already talked about eye support and solve problems. So I hope you enjoyed the video. This is just really quickly just showing you how to connect to the vehicle, how to properly navigate. And again, we can't emphasize enough. Call us when you're having an issue. We are here to help you. Thank you much for watching.